Hi everybody, this is Early Medieval Embroidery and I'm Alexandra Makin. This video is a how-to demo showing you how stem stitch was worked during the Early Medieval period. And during this demonstration you'll see the front and the back of the embroidery being worked at the same time. And this is a really interesting stitch so I'm going to go into more um, of the history and detail of it um, in a stitch focus which will be uploaded soon. Two variations of stem stitch were used during the early medieval period and in this video I'm going to show you the most popular one. The second one, which is only seen on the bare tapestry, I'll show in a second how-to video. We don't know how most surviving examples of stem stitch are started or finished, so I'm casting on in the modern way um, using two small holding stitches. The first stitch is made by bringing the thread to the front of the fabric and taken to the reverse slightly further along the working line, forming a short straight stitch that isn't pulled taut. For the second stitch, the thread is brought to the front of the fabric halfway along the line of the first stitch made. The angle of the stitches in this version are worked from the top left to bottom right, so you need to hold the loop of the previous stitch to the opposite side, that's the right side of the working line. The thread for the next stitch will now come to the front on the left side of the working line. Pull the loop of the previous stitch taut. Now take the thread further along the working line and to the reverse of the fabric, but again, don't pull it tight. To create all the following stitches, always bring the thread to the front of the fabric, halfway between the new stitch and the previous one, not through the same hole of as the last stitch like we would today. And also remember to place the loop of the previous thread on the right side of the working line. Repeat the process I've outlined, remembering to hold the loop of the previous stitch on the right side of the working line so that the needle comes up on the left side. You can see on the reverse of the fabric that you should have um, a line of broken little individual stitches, not a continuous line of thread. Now I've reached the starting stitches 
and I can cut off the loose end and sew over them, anchoring them in place. You can see this version of the stitch is what I would call a bit leggy. It's not as smooth as the version we use today. Today people sometimes call this version outline stitch. But we don't know if the embroiderers of the early medieval period would have distinguished the stitches in this way. If creating a closed working line like here, to make the last stitch, slide the needle under the first stitch you made on the right side, creating an invisible join. So for this second sample, I'm going to show you how multiple lines of stem stitch were worked. So you can see that the first line is worked in exactly the same way as before and each stitch lies from top left to bottom right. Now you can see that I'm angling the needle under the first stitch to create that closing working line. Now I'm changing to a different coloured thread so you can see how the second line of stitching is worked. And this is how um, all multiple lines were created except for the St Cuthbert ribbons um, where the rows were all worked from top left to bottom right and the Bayer tapestry um, and that particular piece is going to form an, another how-to video. While the front and back show this second row is technically the same as the first, the angle of each stitch is now from top right to bottom left. So you have to hold the loop of thread from the previous stitch to the left side of the working line so that the needle comes up on the right side. This means that both rows of stem stitch now form a chevron pattern and this is something you can see across early medieval embroideries that have motifs filled with multiple rows of stem stitch.
On the reverse, these areas are filled with rows of small individual stitches, um, not complete straight lines. And here's the finished example. Um, and if you've enjoyed the video or you've got a question or a comment, then please include them in the comments box below and remember to click like.